Hey there, alright, this is video number 25 and video number 9 of module 2 and what we're going to be talking about in this one is the commodity channel index alright, so let's navigate to the trading station let's go back to the uh, the navigator here and scroll down to the commod commodity channel index right here left click, drag and drop I'm going to actually choose black for this style here I'm going to leave it to the typical price um, HLC which is high low close and forward slash free set it to a uh, period 14 levels and visualization you can leave as it is for the moment and then click on OK alright let's move that to the front ok so what is the rule of thumb here what is this actually telling us well basically you can just barely see we've got some levels in here we've got some levels at the zero zero area which is the vertical scale then we've got a hundred and then minus a hundred you can just barely see these so what I'm going to do is um, open up this area again I've just basically double clicked on the black line to bring it up or alternatively you can right click choose indicators list and then choose commodity channel index and click on edit alright but I'm just gonna do it the other way because it's a little bit quicker for me alright okay so what I'm going to do here is go to the vis uh, levels tab and I want to change the color of this I want to bring this out a little bit more so what I'm going to do is just choose red alright so now I can see the levels a little bit more clearly okay and the first thing we really need to look at is the areas in the market where we can go long. Now there's two ways that you can go long, there's two ways you can go short, but there's only one preferable way to go long or short with this particular indicator or with this particular method I'm about to show you. Alright, now if you just take a little look, you remember this um, saying when I said to you that if you can fit a round peg into a round hole that you can do this? Well, when you're looking at these charts, try to look for patterns in the market. All right, so the first thing I look at, if I don't really know I, I had to work this indicator, I look for these patterns. So I can see that this black line is going up, and I can see that the market price is going up with it. So this seems to be a pretty good match with this particular indicator with the market prices. As this market price starts to come down, this line starts to come down. As it starts to go sideways a little bit, this moves sideways, and eventually this moves up, and that moves up. So it's, it seems to be a pretty good mirror image going on. All right, now we could take a look at the market where see this vertical scale when the black line goes above it we can go long and when the black line goes below it we can go short but that's not really the true way to actually um, do that because you can get to the point where it goes long here and then it goes up a little bit and it starts to come back down so there's a bit of um, sporadic um, you know movements going on when you're inside these two red lines okay so anything inside it is really an area to tell you not to trade All right, when you see the break above the red line then you go long and when you see the break below the um, the minus 100 line then you go short now you have gotta say to yourself when you're applying this indicator onto your charts and you want to actually create trades from it the rule of thumb really is to, no matter what indicator you're putting on always always put your support and resistance levels in alright now I'm going to leave my resistance level here because it seems to be the more truer resistance level and this one here seems to be like the market got overbought by a little bit and it came back to retest the normal levels and it did and this one was an, the next retest and you can see it didn't go up any higher so this is more of a true um, resistance level all right, it's only a resistance level because the currency price is actually below that line. All right, now we go ahead and put some support levels in, an area in the market where the market decided they didn't want to go any lower. Okay, And it's below the market price, so therefore it's a support. All right, so now when we want to go for um, like a buy trade, we could have essentially gone long at this particular point here where the CCI had gone above the hundred at the hundred level alright so here is where it actually gave us the signal we go in on the next bar which is right here and we could have gone in at 129.65 and this area right there would actually be our take profit target 
Why? Because it's another resistance level. Right, so what I'm going to try and do is find a mean average, just randomly um, you know, approximate where it's going to be. And ironically enough, that's basically where that point actually hit and you know didn't come back down any further. We've got um, starts at 12, so just trying to look at how many hours we've got left until this bar and I believe um, so we're up to 20 to 24 so we got another 22 minutes left until this bar finishes um, and hopefully it should break it might actually test the top portion of the resistance level and if it actually breaks it we're looking to come up to around about 133.84 so anyways um, you got to say to yourself that okay so is this particular point where we want to take the buy trade is it in the immediate presence of a resistance level well it's not it's quite far away all right if we acted around about here then we'll go no because it's only 20 pips away from that um, resistance level and it's not really going to be worth your time especially off the four hour time frames four hour time frames can generally return around about 100 pips or more per trade you just need to be patient enough to leave it open long enough for it to hit it all right all right so we would have been good on that and we also would have been good hitting our tp target as well all right let's take a look at a sell trade opportunity okay here is a sell trade opportunity right here all right and we've already seen that the market from this point onwards back we can see there's a bit of congestion there all right so if we took one of these sell trades we really need to say to ourselves well hang on a minute is this going to come down any lower all right and we don't really know but we can see that it hasn't because there's been a congestion on the left hand side which is normally an indication that that is a new support level all right but considering the prices are below it's now turning into a new resistance all right, if we keep on moving over to the left we want to try and see if this line that we put in is actually like a really true uh, support or resistance level well we can see that the market did actually get rejected there it didn't go down much lower and then it tried again afterwards but it didn't like it so it came back up to that level so that's true that rings true and then we want to look at this uh, take profit target for any buy possibilities yes well that's uh, a true um, resistance area as well because it got rejected there all right, same here, same here, same there, and the same over here. All right, so let's have a look for another sell trade opportunity. Um, we don't exactly break right there, um, we break round about here. So we could have gone short here. Take note that this area right there would be a first um, kind of open TP. When I say open, it's basically that we haven't essentially put any um, take profits or sell um, stop losses in there all right we've basically left them open all right so we take a look here's the signal then the first thing I'm going to do is go right let's look at the next support line okay well that's 146 pips there so I will probably risk that all right now I'm not going to put the TP in straight away because I don't like my brokers knowing what my take profits are or what my stop losses are because right, there are brokers out there no matter who they are they will go ahead and um, sniff you out and stop you out all right so be careful okay so here we are and while I'm monitoring this trade I've now seen this big red candle that's come down so that's really a good sign in my books to keep this trade open because a lot of volumes gone in that so where you see one you're normally going to see another one not all the time but some of the time okay and now you can see and um, where the black line starts to increase in value and it's kind of might want to make you think to close the trade but you only close the trade when it breaks the middle line well this didn't actually break it it touched it and then a little bit further later it did actually um, break it and it broke it right there so that's our point of exit right here not there because it didn't actually break it alright so right there so we would have got out from here but we would have got in um, where was that short trade we would have got in around about here for 513 pips in like 100 and, ooh, 160 hours. So that's all, you know, about a week. All right. So oh, it's more than a week, isn't it? So almost. Yeah, it's almost a week. All right. So 
keep these trades open as long as you can and, and play the signals out, trust the signals and you will do very well. Let's just show you one more example for a buy trade. Um, here we can see where it breaks right there. We get in there. Take a look as well at the stop loss. Look, 96 pips in deficit. All right, so another thing as well is to work out what your floating losses are going to be like and if your floating losses are going to exceed your um, your analysis and what I mean by that is is that when we got in here see where we go long right there we want to basically look to see if there's any support levels that's also very close to our buy level all right and that's what we want to minimize the overall deficit um, that you can experience from the trade okay and then um, uh, you know, and then go from basically from there. Now, you can, uh, here is another instance where it does go long. All right, but you need to again take a look at this and then ask yourself, how close are we away from the resistance level? Would you have actually gone for it? Is this within your risk capacity? For me, no. All right, I don't really like to enter into a buy trade when there's too much congestion right there. All right, I would like to be somewhere up here. You know, have a buy trade here and have no congestion in its direction as it moves up. All right. So, be careful when you approach these, just to make sure there's no immediate resistance or what have you. But when you're also doing a buy trade, try and see if you can actually buy on a support line as close as possible, because that would actually reduce your overall negative floating losses. All right. So I hope that's made sense. Um, so until then, I will see you very shortly in the next video. Bye for now.